I can't believe this will be my very last month in this journal. For the past six months, I have been undertaking a bit of a painting project with my bullet journal. There was something about having a journal with watercolor paper for pages that made me feel like I just had to make the most of those. Hi, I'm Erin. Thanks for clicking on my video. I'm so excited to plan with you for June 2024. I've spent the first half of this year in this journal. It's from a brand called Mellow Days and it has watercolor paper. I saw this as kind of an opportunity to incidentally work on my painting skills throughout the year. And it has fulfilled that purpose. I do feel like I've improved as a painting artist, not that I have done anything particularly crazy, but I also feel like I learned a lot about myself through this process. And one of those things that I learned is that I don't like textured paper, which this journal has. So I'm really looking forward to getting back to a more standard journal for my next one. But also, as you can see on the screen right now, I'm not giving up in the last month. At the same time, I didn't have a huge amount of time to spend on this setup, so I wanted to do something that was going to be pretty easy, something that I could enjoy and kind of switch my brain off a little bit while I set up, and something that wasn't going to take me hours upon hours to do. If you saw my video for the initial setup in the new mystery journal last week, which is a journal that you can win, and if you're interested in that, definitely hit the link in the cards or in the description to check that video out. If you saw that, then you would have seen a little bit of this setup already because I got the idea for this setup from a Skillshare class about painting really easy flowers with gouache. That video was sponsored by Skillshare, this one is not, but I still very much recommend it because I do feel like I learned a lot about this kind of loose floral style. I'm really bad with loose painting, loose anything, I'm a bit of a structure girly, hence the whole bullet journal appeal, but this one I found I could really just lose myself in and not that get too caught up in details. They're just really easy scribbly flowers. You almost just use your brush like a pencil and I love the way they came out. I only have the little Winsor & Newton primary colors collection, which I think only has six paints in the set. So I have to mix all of my colors from scratch, but I actually really enjoy that because I feel like I've also learned a lot about color theory just through trial and error and experimenting in this journal. So that's always a helpful thing. I actually asked my Jubilant Journals and Page Majors level channel members to help me pick the color scheme for this setup. And the one that they chose was a very muted, actually originally I was gonna do watercolor, but we ended up with gouache. And my original intention was for them to be very icy, very gray kind of muted colors. But the more I got into this, the more pastel they became. So that's where we landed. And I'm not mad about it because I think the color palette looks really cute. This first spread that we're working on doesn't actually serve a purpose besides introducing the theme and getting me kind of in a June headspace while I set it up, which is always actually much more helpful than you might think. I also just had a really good time doing it, so I think that makes it plenty valid as far as I'm concerned, but I know not everyone is into a cover spread. That's totally fine too. You have to journal in the way that works for you. The way these flowers work is that they all kind of touch and overlap just a little bit. They're very close together, but you have quite a bit of variation in the color tones. So even though everything is very imprecise and loose, overall, your eye just sees a bunch of flowers once it's done and doesn't kind of question the details. And I love that. I love tricking my eye into thinking things are maybe better than they are. I wasn't actually sure when I started out how much of the page I planned to cover with the flowers, whether I was just gonna do a few little clusters or completely fill the page, but I ended up somewhere kind of in the middle so there's a lot of flowers on the page by the time we finish the spread but at the same time they don't go all the way to the page edges but I just felt like the more of them you could see the more it looks like a pattern and I really liked that they really work better when there are a lot of them in my opinion so here we are I'm really using just paint for this setup. I'm just gonna use the gouache for all of the decorations. And I'm actually going to use gold watercolor as an accent for my lettering, for the centers of the flowers, and also for all of the line work in this setup because I have found this journal does not like fine liners. It has kind of destroyed some of my favorite Sakura Pigma Microns, which is really sad. I got a new set of Pigma Microns and I've marked them so I know which ones they are so that I can use them exclusively for the mystery journal because I don't wanna be using my manky gross destroyed pens, unfortunately, for a journal I'm giving to someone else. My sweet kitty Mitsu has a mess detector built in and he just knows when it's time to try and walk on some wet paint. <laughs> but no washi tapes, no stickers in this setup, not even any markers. It's just my paints for this one, which is very unusual for me. And I'm not sure if it will ever happen again, but I did enjoy the process. By this point, I was pretty much just in a flow state. I had an audio book on. I was listening to The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. And I kind of just kept adding new colors and adding new flowers until I felt like the page was full enough. 
It's funny, isn't it? Because this was the first page that I set up. I learned a lot from the process of doing the flowers on this page. So when I brought them into future pages, I think I did a better job on them, which is always funny, isn't it? Because you would want your cover page to be pretty good, typically. And I don't think it's bad, but I think just the variation in sizes of the flowers that I do on the later ones is much better than these kind of all the same size. I'll be speeding up the painting process on the later pages because you've seen so much of it on the cover spread here, but I did want you to get an idea of how this really came together from start to finish because it's a process. Now we're going to switch to the gold watercolour and I'm going to use it to accent all of my little flowers. I'm using a tiny, tiny brush and I'm going to just pop a little dot in the centre of all of my flowers. I'll also just put a little kind of gold leaf shape or dot in any spaces that I feel like could benefit from filling. This gold watercolour paint is from Kuretake in their Kansai Tambi, the starry version. And I'm using the one that's called Blue Gold and my channel members helped me pick that one out in our live stream where we mood boarded this setup. So thank you so much to my channel members for helping me make this come together. It was so good to have your feedback. I wanted the gold really opaque. So I was using kind of just a little bit of water and making it kind of pasty and thick. And once I've got dots all around in all of the places that I need them and they've dried down a little bit, then I'm going to also use the gold to letter the heading for June right in the middle there too. You can see where it's penciled out. I probably could have erased some of those pencil lines before I got in here with the paint because once the paint is on top, you can't erase what's under it clearly. And some of them are still a little bit visible. I ended up doing a second layer of gold off camera as well to try and hide some of those lines, but I learned from this and I did a bit more erasing before I got in there with my watercolor for the next one because I don't love the pencil lines remaining. I also referenced a font for this lettering style because I knew I wanted something bold and a little bit whimsical and fun, but I didn't want it to be like your typical hand lettering that I always do. I wanted it to be something quite different. So I always jump into Canva when I want to do that and I just type the words that I want to use and then I use the Canva image as a reference. So. This one is called Bukhari script and I specifically kept it to lowercase letters because I wanted everything to be kind of uniform. In the best case scenario, I probably would have left a bit more space around the descender of the J over there on the left side. It's like touching some of the flowers, whereas the rest of the text isn't, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. I think the effect is still there. And once we erase these pencil lines, look how nice it is. And it's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but the gold has this lovely sheen as well. It is a little bit shiny. It's not like super in your face, but there is a touch of a shine there and that always makes me so happy. Now we've got the cover spread done, let's turn the page and get into the first of the functional layouts. This one's going to be a calendar and I'm jumping in with my kneadable eraser and just removing as much of the pencil line as I can first without completely erasing it so I can still see where everything's meant to go. Traditionally, I am a ruler user. I usually like my lines to be very straight, but because the florals in this theme are so very loose and relaxed, I was like, I'm okay with freehanding some lines actually. And I'm jumping in with the gold watercolor because pens on this paper, this is why I'm getting into fountain pens because they're kind of the only thing that will work on this paper, it's crazy. I'm going for kind of a bigger calendar. So each of the individual day boxes on this calendar are five dot grid spaces tall by five dot grid spaces wide with one extra dot grid space at the very top for the initial for each day of the week. So the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's the one that I've just colored in in a solid gold along the top so that I know what day goes where. I know what day goes where because I always set up my calendars pretty much the same way, but I do share my stuff online. So it helps to have that as a reference so that other people know what they're looking at if they see my layout on YouTube or on Instagram or somewhere. And I like my weeks to start on Mondays. I'm self-employed and have been for like 12 years at this point, so I do what I want. But if you prefer a Sunday start, that is totally valid too. Honestly, the days of the week have very little meaning for me anymore because weekends don't exist for me. So <laughs> I just have to pick a day to start with and Monday is it. Now we're going to switch back to the gouache and start adding some flowers around. And you can see I'm already varying the size of them. Look how much better it looks already. I've decided I'm going to do two little clusters of flowers. And I'm just taking my inspiration for where they should go from the shape of the calendar. So because the month of June starts on a Saturday, there's going to be a bit more space on the left side above the calendar than on the right because I just didn't need space for days there where I did need them on the right for the Saturday, Sunday. So we're going to put some flowers there and we're going to balance them out with some flowers on the opposite side underneath.
especially when the functional part of the page is outlined in gold like this, I feel like adding the gold accents onto the flowers just really tie the whole thing together, and I love it. I had this idea about using stamps to add the numbers to each day, and it didn't work. Um, much too much paint, I think, so I decided to just jump in with a pen instead. I said I didn't use any pens, apparently I lied, I used one pen. This is the Sakura Pigma Micron in the 003 version, so it's very, very fine. I didn't want any like visual weight from the blackness of a pen on the page to kind of weigh down all of this light, kind of breezy stuff, so that worked pretty well. And I did find that it worked really nicely over the paints, although I forgot to do the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday just then. We'll go back and fix that once I realize, don't worry. But for now, we're going to move on to my tracker spread. It's kind of a combination habit tracker and goals, favorites, and musings this time. Usually I'd do one on the left page and the other on the right page, but just for something different, I thought we'd split it across the middle and kind of have both work across the whole spread. Similar to the way I set up the calendar page before, I'm starting off with the gold because it's going to be kind of a lot of line work for this one. So we're going to do the headings and the line work first and then jump in after and add all of the flowers. I'm going for a bit of a bullet journal classic setup for the habit tracker. This is one I used to use in every single journal, although I would set it up sideways, so I had to rotate my book to use it. And I know this is something Jess has mentioned, especially in the Planner Pals podcast, that we used to be okay with rotating our books to use a page and now we're not. I could not agree more. <laughs> I will not turn my book sideways unless it's to paint a flower, apparently. <laughs> The way this table works is that that smaller column on the left side is for the name of each habit and then the space on the right side that is going to cross the page. I just haven't set it up yet because I'm trying to work left to right to not smudge things because paint. Um, that will it cover the entire month of June. So every time I complete a habit, I can put a little dot or color in the space that's for that habit and know that it has been completed. The boxes underneath the habit tracker, there will be three of them. Ultimately, I've tried to space them evenly. Those are for goals, favorites, and musings. So goals is where I set goals for the month. I haven't done the best job of setting goals for the year, so having monthly goals has been helpful at least. The favorites part is where I write down anything that I'm really enjoying in that month, and the musing section is just a little snapshot of what's been on my mind. And now we paint. And I wasn't totally sure how to do this one. I thought maybe I could do the whole page and kind of hide some flowers behind the boxes. But then I thought, let's go back to what I would maybe do with paper and stickers and washi tape in my journal ordinarily. And one of my go-to layouts for that is to do a bar on the left and a bar on the right of decoration and have the functional stuff in the middle. So that's what I'm doing, but with paint. So we're gonna have a wall of flowers on the left side of the functional parts and a wall of flowers on the right side and just leave the gaps between the trackers and in the middle blank. Next step is to add numbers and initials along the gold bar at the top of the habit tracker here so that I know which space corresponds to which day of the month. I made that deliberately two dot grid spaces tall, that gold bar, so that the bottom row can be the number, the one, two, three, four, five, and the top row can be the initial. So actually, let's quickly add these initials on to the calendar over here too, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I found with this pen, I needed to go over it a few times to make it visible enough here, but it does write pretty well over the watercolor. In fact, I think it writes better over the watercolor than it does just on the bare page. So there you go. June starts on a Saturday, so the first of the initials that I write over here on the habit tracker 
will be Saturday and then it'll continue from there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to the end of the month. Once we've got those down, I will also just add a little heading in the gold bar for each of the boxes underneath the habit tracker. I'm just going with a capitals kind of very simple look because I didn't want it to stand out. I wanted it to be easy to read, but I didn't want it to be kind of a feature of the page. We've got the habit tracker and the goals favorite musing section all set up. So let's turn the page and go on to the content planner. But first we must erase some lines so that they aren't visible later. The kneadable erasers are actually really good for this, partly just because they don't leave eraser crumbs everywhere, which I love to death, but also because they can be used in so many ways. Like you can just dab them over the top of your pencil lines and it will erase some of it. And so that's really helpful in a situation like this. My content planner, lately I've been doing a little bit differently to this, but I decided for the sake of this one, for aesthetics and for the ease of setting it up, I just wanted to go with a big old calendar. So this is pretty much the same as the calendar on the calendar spread that we did earlier, the like month log, future log thing. But I've made the boxes one dot grid space taller and one dot grid space wider for each of the days. So it's six by six this time instead of five by five. Having a slightly bigger calendar also means I have a little bit less space for decoration, but I'm still going to stick to the idea that I had for the previous calendar where I'm going to add my flowers in the top left and the bottom right, but I'm also factoring in the content heading here. I'm so sorry, my camera stopped recording and I was so enjoying the process that I didn't notice, I didn't capture that stuff, but you've seen it on the previous pages anyway, so I don't feel like you're missing that much. I would usually, if I was just hand lettering with a pen, maybe call this a content planner, but I went with just content so that it would kind of work with the lettering style, making it big and bold without taking up too much space. Also, I don't think I mentioned this. If it wasn't clear, this is where I plan my social media content for the month. I plan out what my YouTube videos are going to be and which days they will go live on. It helps me plan things out for sponsorships as well when there are sponsored videos on this channel, which happens sometimes. And it also helps me plan my Instagram content, although I've been not very good at that lately. Uh, I need an extra day in the month, what can I say? And look at that gold sheen. I'm a little bit sad now that I haven't been using paint for the functional parts of all my layouts in this journal. I'm only discovering it in the last one, but that's okay. We're gonna move on to the very last spread and this one we're gonna do flowers first. This is a weekly spread and it will be the first of many, but we're only setting up one in this video. We're gonna do the rest together in some live streams. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna get notified about that. I haven't scheduled the live streams yet, but when they are scheduled, then you can find out. It's been a bit tricky to schedule lives lately because I've been heckin' busy, but hopefully going into June, I will have a little bit more free time on my hands and maybe we can get back to doing two live streams a month. So there's one that suits the US crowd and one that suits the Europe crowd. And my pals everywhere else, I will do my best, but someone always misses out. It's a bit sad, actually. Time zones are hard. This weekly is a bit of a different one for me. I've never used this one in my own journal before. I'm doing little clusters at the points where the days are going to be divided and maybe even the lines that divide them will intersect. I wanted to do that first so that the gold would not kind of interfere with the flowers. We're gonna add the gold lines that divide things later on. I also wanted to see what the flowers looked like in little clusters. We've done lots of big clusters of these flowers so far, big walls of them. So I wanted to try some tiny little bouquets instead and I love them. In fact, I think this one might be my favorite spread aesthetically of the entire setup, so I'm excited for you to see it all done. called this layout like a SWOT analysis weekly recently. So basically you're dividing each page into quarters and you're not putting anything in boxes, you just divide them with a line that separates them. And so that's the way this weekly is going to work. Unfortunately, the Pigma Micron it just can't quite hack it here. I started trying to letter with it. You see how it just hates the texture of the paper? I'm actually using my partner's fountain pen here. And so the Saturday looks a little bit manky, but man, the rest of the titles, I just tried to 
do my handwriting in the way that I always do, but like kind of rush it a little bit to make it deliberately a touch messy. And I really like how it looks, it's kind of romantic. I don't know how to describe it, but I love it. I used to make my weeklies so that they just went from Monday through to Sunday, but lately I've just been putting whatever fits on a page, on a single page. So this one will have Saturday through to Saturday, and the next weekly will go from Sunday through to wherever it reaches when I get around to setting that one up. And here we have my final theme in the watercolour paper journal. What a ride this has been! As much as I've enjoyed the process and learning and pushing myself to do something really different, I have missed stickers and washi tape and I cannot wait to get back to them, so I'm very excited about my July theme. I have no idea what it will be yet, but we'll see when we get there. Thank you again so much for planning with me. Leave me your favourite flower emoji in the comments if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Don't forget that you can enter to win the mystery giveaway journal on my channel right now. If you'd like to see more of my adventures with paint in my journal, there is a link to the playlist on the right side of the screen right now, as well as a link to a video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Bye.